over a decade, most of Darfur has been off limits to the rest of the world. Now that Omar al-Bashir is gone, the new government is promising change and slowly allowing access. We've just arrived in Al Fasher. It's the capital of North Darfur. And it's a pretty well-developed city. There's a UN peacekeeping mission here and a large military presence. Since 2003, at least 300,000 Darfuris have been killed, but millions more were forced out of their villages and into camps like this one. The government historically denied most basic services, so people here rely only on each other. This clothing drive was organized for victims of an attack carried out just 10 days before we arrived. <laughs> Have any of you tried to go back to your land in the years that you've been living here? For their own safety, camp leaders often share videos of attacks on other camps. This one shows the recent deadly clashes in El Jenena. Dozens were killed and tens of thousands were once again displaced. The Janjaweed were originally an Arab militia armed by the government to put down the rebellion. They were brutally effective. In 2013, many were absorbed into a paramilitary group called the Rapid Support Forces. For people living here, only the uniform changed. Last June, they were behind an early morning raid in the capital that left more than 100 dead. This is one of the men alleged to have ordered that attack. The IDPs in Al Janaina are saying that the RSF was directly involved in an attack that killed dozens of IDPs there. I mean, the problems that happen in Darfur are problems that are between the government, problems between the government and the government. The government is very clear. Why is this the problem? Do you deny the claims from IDPs and civilians that the RSF has been involved in any recent attacks that have led to the death of civilians? أنا أتحدث بصراحة وهدعم السريع لم تساعد قبيلة عربية أو قبيلة غير عربية للاقتتال مع بعض أنا لا لا أنفي بحكم تبعية لهذه القوات ولكن أؤكد في هذا للتاريخ قوات الدعم السريع لم ترتكب أي عمليات بتاع إبادة منذ إنشاء حتى الآن قوات الدعم السريع لم تقوم بأي عمليات بتاعة حرق القرى أو قلافه حتى الآن قوات الدعم السريع العكس تعمل على إقامة قرى Human rights groups say government forces are notorious for bombing, burning and raiding villages. That's left thousands of towns abandoned, just like this one. The government justified these attacks by accusing residents of sympathizing with the rebels. And according to Amnesty International, there's evidence of widespread use of chemical weapons against civilians. Did other people in the village or in your family have the same symptoms? We weren't able to independently confirm the use of chemical weapons in the specific attack on Abdul Karim's village. 
but experts say several hundred villages were likely targeted with chemical weapons by the al-Bashir regime. Living here, does it feel like there's anything different between now and the time during the war that that was happening? With the RSF and army deployed around the region, all but one mountain range is now under government control. We're heading to central Darfur, to the Jebel Mara Mountains that start just over there. It's the last rebel stronghold in Darfur, with most of the territory held by one faction of the Sudanese Liberation Army. We've been in touch with commanders on the mountain for the last few months to try and negotiate access to understand the real toll of the conflict there. The last foreign journalists in Jebel Mara snuck in more than five years ago. We were the first to gain access from the government in more than a decade. Despite our authorization, the military still blocked us for days when we tried to cross the last checkpoint. It's really important that someone at the ministry speaks to military intelligence today. Finally, we made it to the first town on the rebel-held side, where we met SLA soldiers and started the journey up the mountain on foot. So we're just on patrol, and we're hearing gunfire, I think, from two directions. These guys have been talking for a few days about a potential government operation against them. It's what they were preparing for today and going deeper inside the mountain for. But at the moment, we're not sure what's going on. The Sudanese Liberation Army, or the SLA, was formed in 2003 to fight against government-led persecution of non-Arab Darfuri tribes. The SLA is led by Abdul Wahid Al Noor. He refuses to give up territory or participate in peace talks until humanitarian organizations are allowed back to Darfur, militias are disarmed, and Al Bashir faces justice. They have done very, very bad things in, mm -hmm. around this area. But for many of these soldiers, the conflict is personal. Most say they joined the rebels after their own families and villages were attacked.
Longtime soldiers like Muhammad told us they faced aerial and ground attacks as recently as 2019. He wanted to show us the villages inside the mountain that were hardest hit by the bombings. Evidence of the atrocities here has gone largely undocumented. How long did the bombings last? في 2013 القصف استمر لفترة أكثر من أربعة ولا ستة شهور. 2016 2016 ده كان سنين No one knows exactly how many civilians live here now, but soldiers say hundreds of thousands live under their protection. As word of our arrival spread, residents rushed out to show us the bomb fragments they've collected over the years. Are you still living in fear here, living on the mountain? Sweeping promises from the new prime minister have revived hope for peace in Darfur. Many here are skeptical. Mohammed, no. what do you think can end the conflict here? I don't think there will be a change. Maybe the politicians will be a change. But I think there will be a change in the area of the people and the people. I think there will be a change in the area of the people. There will be a change in the area of the people. What do you guys think of the new transitional government of Hamdok and everybody else who's part of the new government after al-Bashir. In the time of Hamdouk, we had three times. Before the war, we had to go to the war. We had to go to the war, 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 what are you still here fighting for? Naharib Adli Ardi, Kulani, Amati, Akhwani, Kulum Katalum, Tibar, Jamea, Fumujer, Hanansa, Hanadata Muzema, Nazi Lakmat, Illa Jalhak.